Hi, my name's Jude Bond. I'm lead artist on Alien Isolation. We're here at E3 today uh, showcasing our new game, Alien Isolation. First person, sorry, it's a first person survival horror. Um, and there we go. What are you guys showing new when it comes to this experience here at E3? Uh, well, new here at E3, before, now we're showing uh, lots of new mechanics in the demo. We've got, um, we've got new weapons, new equipment, um, new enemies. Um, you need to go and see. You need to go and see the see the demo. All right, so let's walk through that that the yeah. the experiences. What are some of the new enemies? Okay, so uh, we've, we've, we're now revealing uh, the the Seeks and Synthetic, which is a um, a kind of fairly primitive um, android character. Um, they're not inherently bad. They're not inherently good. They just do what they're told. So you know, they it may be helpful in the game. They may not. But you know, if they if you do get on the wrong side of them, they are very powerful. Um, we're also uh, we've uh, showed the flamethrower for now as, a, as another weapon um, in the game. Again, that's a very powerful weapon, but it certainly has its drawbacks. Um, Ammunition is going to be scarce, and it's not it's not it's not going to help you with every situation. When it comes to the enemies, talk a little bit about this game from the perspective of it's not just an alien you have to worry about, but actual people on the space station. Okay, so on the, on the station there are other human survivors as well, but just like the player, their motivation is pretty much the same. They're trying to survive, it's a hostile place, and so they're, they're very unpredictable. You know, you can, you can, uh, um, you might meet friendly humans, you might meet humans who are immediately hostile towards you, you might meet some who are ambivalent. Um, they're just believable people uh, trying to survive. Talk a little about the story and where this fits into the overall alien mythology. Okay, so the game takes place 15 years after the first movie, um, and basically how everything starts is um, the black box from the Nostromo is discovered. Um, it's taken to a remote decommissioned space station, um, and a small crew goes there to retrieve it, to find out what went on, what went on on the Nostromo, um, and joining that crew, um, is Amanda, Ellen Ripley's daughter, trying to find out what happened to her mother. What are some similarities between the daughter and uh, Ripley that everyone knows from the movies? There's going to be some similarities, right? She's a strong female lead, she's determined, she's going to get the job done, but, you know, much like her mother, she just wants to survive. How have you guys created this world that looks very much like the universe from the film? So, um, obviously everybody knows the original movie, it's a beautiful looking thing. Um, and when we started the project, we had access to all kinds of archive materials from Fox. Um, and basically we just looked at the movie, looked at the archive materials, took everything apart, deconstructed everything in order to understand how to put it back together in a way that was believable and looked like it could have been on the set from the original movie. Can you talk a little about the gameplay experience from the perspective of you don't run around gunning down everything, but the alien is actually a huge, formidable beast. Absolutely. So, um, the alien itself is, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not uh, it's not running, the, the AI is incredibly complicated, it's unpredictable, it's, um, it, it's, it's not a prescribed piece, it's not a prescribed character on a, on a path. The thing it has is, is, is living, breathing, it will hunt you, it uses its senses to try and, to try and catch you, and so, you know, as a player, um, you know, you need to avoid the alien. Really, it's not. It's, you don't want to incur its wrath, and so you know, you can. Any scenario that we put in front of you in the game, there's multiple ways of dealing with that scenario. You know, you can circumvent the problem. You can cause a distraction. You can try and do it head on, but you know, that's not always going to work. You talk about the game from the perspective. Of every time you play, it's different, and talk about the AI that you guys have created. Exactly. So, as I say, you know, it's not a prescribed path. The AI is. Um, it's, it's, it's very, very complicated. I'm not a coder, I can't tell you how it's so complicated. Um, but basically the, 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 the alien is dynamic, reactive and unpredictable. If, you, if it kills you in one place, don't expect to see it there again. It's going to find you somewhere else and yeah, you will be scared. What would the experience be like for the high-end PC gamer as they explore this world you guys have created? Um, so we've, we've, we've built the game on uh, all platforms concurrently, so that's allowed us to look at each platform and see what we can get the most out of, um, out of all the platforms. And as a PC gamer with you know, high-end high -end technology, you know, we're gonna, you're going to be able to run the game at 4K um, and it's going to be a beautiful looking thing. Um, we, you know, I'm not allowed to really talk about uh, a lot of the other things that are coming at the moment, but um, you know, we're trying to basically do the best we can on every platform, and you know, the PC is certainly one of them. We've got a lot of hardcore PC gamers in the office. We're not going to be letting them down.